All right, here we go. We're going to do some weighted averages. So we're going to start with this one that we did in class, all right? Now, keep in mind, with weighted averages, what we did with the grades is we took the grade and we multiplied it by its weight, and then we added the next grade. So grade times the weight, and then we added the next grade times its weight, and then we added the next grade, and so on and so forth. And then we divided by the total weight and that gave us our final grade or the overall average okay so this is going to be helpful as we go through these mixture and other types of questions all right so let's go ahead and look at the seasoning one okay now we want to go be we want to go ahead and fill in the table first the next one I'll do won't have a table all right so first we'll use the information that we have it says, um, well, for the amount of basal, that's easy because we're just going to go ahead and put in the 20%, the 100%. You could technically do a different thing here, but I'm just going to do it this way so that we can be consistent and, and write down the things that we have. Okay, so we've got the 20% and the 100% and the 30%. Now I need to figure out how many ounces of each of these I have. So it says that she's making 16 ounces of her own 30% blend. So here's the 30% blend. I want 16 ounces of that. And then it says let B represent the amount of basal Sheila should add to the 20%. So this is, what is she adding? Well, it says that she's going to add pure basal. That's 100% basal. That means it's all basal. It's pure. All right. So, so we're going to say that that is B. B is the amount of pure basal Sheila's going to add. Now, it should make sense then that if I need 16 total ounces and B of them are the pure basal, then 16 minus B is whatever we started with. Okay, she's mixing these two together, and that's an important idea that we need to recognize. Those two things are being mixed together, and this one is my final mixture. This is what I'm going to get in the end. All right, now both of these numbers, all of these numbers are going to be important. Now, as I go through, if you want these to be percents, you can leave them as a whole number percent, or if your math teacher taught you to write it as 0 0.20 because that's 20 over 100, that's fine too. But as long as you recognize that they're all percents and you're very consistent with that, then it should be okay to just leave them that way. All right. So what we're going to do, just like we did with the grades, is we're going to take the overall amount and multiply it by the weight. Now, recognize here that the overall average is what we want the result to be. So our overall average, we want to have this 30% basal, right? That's our goal, to have this average at the end. It's like trying to get that A, except we're not looking for an A. We're looking for a super duper F, which is 30%. And so that's what we're looking for. We want to get that 30%. And so that 30% is going to be our overall average out here on the outside. And so if I just put that outside like this, okay, and then I need to do the, the grade or the amount times its weight. So that's going to be the grade, the 20 times its weight, which is 16 minus B. And then we're going to add, because that's what we're doing, the grade times the next weight. So that the next piece of this is the 100 times the B, right? And then we have to divide by the total weight. Now, you have two numbers here. One of these represents, represents the overall average. That's what we want our mixture to come out as, right? We want it to come out as 30%. That's the average of this 120 uh, based off of the weights. But then we're going to go ahead and put it over 16 because that is our total weight. Now, there's actually another way to set these up. If you look in your book, and this is actually in your book, the worksheet corresponds to your book, section 9-4, it'll put this 16 over with the 30. And that's fine, but that's not really showing it as an average. The really dumb thing in the book is they say, an average is the sum of these things added together, divided by the total weight, and then they don't even show the division when they work it. And so in order to understand it as an average, this is the way that we're going to write it for now. But you can move the 16 over, obviously. We can distribute the 20. Notice that I have two Bs. Those Bs need to get together. I hate having two Bs. Having two Bs is almost as bad as having a B on the bottom of the fraction, which is like the worst thing ever. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and start off. And if you want to multiply by that 16, that'd be great. 
You can distribute this too if you want, but you know, just remember everything on the top is in its own little world. So we're going to multiply by 16. And so I'm going to have 20 times 16 minus b plus 100 times b, so that's 100b, equals 30 times 16. If you don't know how to do that in your head, that's fine. You don't need to know how to do that in your head. It is 480, though. You can do that on your calculator. You punch it in, or if you don't know, if you can't use your calculator, you just pull it over, and you go 16 times 30. And you learned how to do this back in fourth grade. I know, because I was teaching a third grader math last year, and he was already doing this. So I know you learned by fourth grade, even, even if you weren't very good at math. So this is a fourth grade concept. You can do it. I trust you. Okay. So we still got this problem. We got to put these b's together. So let's distribute the 20 so I can get this other b. So 20 times 16 is uh, 320 minus 20b plus 100b equals 480. Now from there I can put the b's together. And so I'm going to move over here. So I've got 320 plus 80b. 80B, that sounds kind of like my name, Eddie B. Okay, and then 480. And then we're going to subtract the 3. See, this part should be easy, right? The setup was the hard part. But once we see this over and over and over again, the setup will get easier and easier. And so this should be divided by 80, which will be B equals 2. So that should be our final answer, though. Now, I know on your worksheet it asks you a part B and a part C and blah, 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 blah. But I'm not going to do that for you. I'm going to leave a little bit up to your imagination. B is 2. That's this. B is 2. So that's how much pure basal I need to add. You can answer the other questions based off of what you have here. That Those shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and since I'm, I'm, I'm already over my normal five minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and do one more just for the heck of it. So here we go. We're going to do sales. Now, this one doesn't have a table. So I'm going to go ahead and make a table. So let's figure out what we got here. We got two different things. We got Virginia peanuts and we got Spanish peanuts. Okay, and we're going to put them together to get a mixture. Okay, so here we go. I'm already starting to put my table together. We got our Virginia, our Spanish, and okay so now what do we know about the Virginia peanuts we know that they cost we've got a cost here which is three dollars and forty cents per pound so I'm gonna need to take different amounts of these right I'm gonna take some Virginia peanuts and some Spanish peanuts and mix them together so this is gonna be the pounds which is the amount so then I got the Spanish peanuts uh, oh, the mixture is 340. Holy smokes, did it help if I actually read my own question, wouldn't it? So, um, sorry, it says Virginia peanuts are 350. Some of you are like, what about? I already read this question. You're doing it wrong. Okay, sorry, I'm doing it wrong. Here we go. There's the 350 for Virginia, $3 for Spanish, and then we got 340 for the mixture. Okay? So, what we want is we want to be able to mix these two together. Right, So these are like our grades. I get certain grades on tests, certain grades on homework. I want to be able to put those together so that my final average comes out to be 340. Right, So that's important to recognize that this is the final overall average. That's what I want to result in. Now how much of these do we have is now the next question. It says he mixes 10 pounds at a time. So I've got 10 pounds of mix here. And so now I have to figure out each of those. And uh, it doesn't give me a variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a variable. Now my first question is asking how many pounds of Virginia peanuts. So I'm going to make that my variable. Okay, and I'm not going to use P because P could be pounds or peanuts. I'm going to use a V for Virginia peanuts. Okay, now the temptation is to go, okay, then I got S for Spanish. But then you got two variables and you don't want two variables. Two variables make it a lot more difficult. So since there are 10 pounds total, and V of them are Virginia, then you should be able to go 10 minus V, which tells you how many pounds are Spanish. That should make sense, because if one pound is Virginia, that means that nine pounds would have to be Spanish. How did I get that nine? 10 minus one. So there you go. So now we're going to go ahead and see if we can set up the equation for these. Okay, so we're going to take the total amount. Sorry, we're going to take the value of this, which is 350, and we're going to multiply by its weight, which is the pounds. And then we're going to add the $3, and we're going to multiply it by its weight, which is 10 minus V. 
And then we're going to divide it by the total weight. And the total weight is 10 pounds, right? That's easy because that's actually a weight. So we can divide by 10. Now what this should equal is the total average cost when you put everything together. So when you put it all together, it should be $3.40. Notice you got weights on top, weight on bottom. The weight on top and the weight on bottom are going to eventually cancel out as far as weights go. And you're going to be left with this cost, which is why this should end up being 340. So from here, you should be able to solve this equation. Okay, again, I'm going to go ahead and multiply by the 10 first, just because I want to get that off the bottom. I'm going to take the 0 off because we don't really need it. 3.5 is the same thing, so 3.5v. Now, in the interest of trying to keep things easy for you, I won't do two steps at once. I'll just get rid of the 0. Okay, so I am doing two steps. I'm getting rid of a bunch of those zeros. But, and I'm also multiplying by 10. So 3.4 times 10 will be 34.0. I don't need the .0, it's just 34. So at this point, I'm going to distribute the 3. So 3.5b. Don't freak out that there's a decimal there. Life is decimals, right? Life happens in fractions. It never, very rarely happens in whole numbers. So there we go. And um, 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 from there, we got two Vs, so let's put the Vs together. I got 3.5 V, and I got a minus 3 V. They're on the same side, so I just put those like terms together. And then I got 0. 0.5, uh, point V, yeah. Good luck with that, Mr. Bowater. Oh, yeah, we forget about that. Okay, so 0. 0.5 V plus 30 equals 34. We subtract 30 from both sides because, ooh, not 38. Man, my zeros look nasty. Okay, 0.5v equals 34 minus 30, which is 4. Divide by 0.5, which is the same thing as dividing by 1 half. And if you divide by 1 half, you can also multiply by the reciprocal, which is 2. So that means that v equals 8. Now, that should make sense, right? Because the overall average cost is closer to the 350 than it is to the $3, which means there need to be more Virginia peanuts than Spanish peanuts. So of those 10 pounds, eight of them are Virginia peanuts. Does that make sense? Which is why it's going to be close to that. If we go back up to what we were doing earlier, okay, see, the 30% is a lot closer to the 20 than the 100, right? Which means we need a lot more of this 20% than we need of the 100. And you notice here that only two of those 16 were basal, right, the pure basal. And so a lot more of it's going to be that basal blend. You can always check your answers by making sure that those things are close and related. All right? I'm going to go ahead and stop the video now so that you can watch the second one. All right? But this puts together the first two.